You know, uh, and I will reach out. I, I decided rather than call some of the guys like Cabrera and those guys, as soon as I got the job, I said I was going to wait till after these meetings and, uh, you know, have a little bit better mindset on what we have here and what we're trying to do, uh, listening to everybody in, these, in, in our room. Uh, so it's a progress that it, it's a process that's going to you know take some time here as far as getting to know everybody. Spring training is going to be huge, and I will reach out to some of these guys. And I don't think I'll have a problem. With you. You're talking about great baseball players. They're going to come into spring training, and the way M Miguel works and all those things, he's going to be a leader by example. He, this is one of the best hitters I've ever seen. So I don't worry about that part of it. It's about reaching out and making sure they understand what we're trying to do here, but you know, no manager, no baseball team's ever going to go in saying, we're just going to try to play through the season and just try to, we're going to try to win. We're going to get these players ready to win baseball games. That's the only way I know how to do these things. And it's about, you know, basics, you know, catch the ball, throw the ball, all those things. And that's what we're going to do. And, and I'm sure that the veterans we have, uh, Martinez and these guys, they've been there and done it. They're winners. They know how, and they're going to help you the leadership. You mentioned you had vocal leaders and leaders by example in Minnesota. For something like this, work, do you need both types? Is one type more important than the other, especially in the young club? Well, I guess you, you're you going to have the quiet leaders. I, I mean, I've been around a few of those guys. Joe Maurer, he's not one of these guys, rah rah guys or anything like that, but he'll have conversations. and. I'll get to know, you know, Miggy and kind of fill out, get a feel for what these guys like to do, how they like to handle situations. Uh, I'll definitely lean on them with some of these younger players. They know them. Uh, Martinez, uh, Iglesias out there, you know, we've got some pretty good ones. Kensler's right now. Uh, so, you know, you never know what's going to happen. But, yeah, you'll lean on them. Uh, the best thing that's going to happen is when we get to spring training, so I'm actually around them. Right now I haven't been around them. I don't really know what makes them tick. Uh, I watched them from the other dugout kill us but I don't really know what it makes them tick, so I'm excited to get the spring training and get this thing rolling. How valuable is it to have the guy you know in McCabe that's managing in Toledo? And as you're managing a big league club, how much do you anticipate keeping tabs on guys in the minors who you might not see right away, but you can anticipate at some point, hopefully during your tenure, well, that's, you know, Doug Mankiewicz is, is a really good baseball guy, so I managed him. I watched him manage through the Twins organization, and, and he's a great baseball guy, so that's that's going to be a good thing for this organization, but there's a lot of good baseball people. I've looked through the staffs. Uh, there's a lot of really good baseball people in this organization. And I'll, I'll get that opportunity, you know, before spring training to sit down with all those guys, and we'll talk about what we need to do, and I'll probably do a lot more listening than I will talk about. Uh, and kind of get a feel for what they're what they're doing. And uh, these guys are good teachers. We got a lot of good teachers in this organization, and I look forward to kind of hanging out with them. And I'll learn from them probably as much as they'll learn from me. And we'll just kind of figure out the right path for this whole organization. What's it like having a Toby manager uh, just succeed right now? And what kind of advice do you have for him? What kind of a manager prospect is uh, he? You're, you're asking the wrong person. You're talking about my son. He's for the Twins and. He's going to manage, and I think Cedar Rapids this year. I think that's where they said. So, good luck to him. He'll he'll lose his hair like I did, and uh, he's a good baseball guy. He's grown up, you know, in baseball his whole life. So, uh, you know, it, uh, he'll do fine. He's he's a good teacher, good with young guys, and uh, Toby will be fine. I, I don't I don't really tell him too much other than other than trust the players, treat the players with respect, and. Uh, when you have to, you know, step on them a little bit, make sure you pat them on the back afterwards. So, you know. Manage along with you or ask questions going back way back to you come home from a game? No, when Toby, Toby second guessed me just like you did. <laughs> so, it's all good, yeah. Ron, you mentioned uh, needing to go out there trying to win, even though your team is quote unquote rebuilding. I've talked to a few front office people this year of teams that are rebuilding. And they said one advantage is you can be a little more creative and try things with your roster, maybe outfield deployment, et cetera, because you're not competing necessarily. You're not expected to win. Do you buy into that, or do you have to go every game? You know, well, the front office can, you know, experiment with different things, but you know, when you're managing a baseball team, you've got a group in there that is going to. I want them to come to the ballpark every day expecting to win. And when you when you start developing players, it's about developing winners. No one finding out ways to win baseball games, and that's 
that's what we're going to try to teach these guys, to play the game with respect, but, but figure out ways to beat people. That's the only way. I mean, there's no other way for me to manage a baseball team without stepping out on the dugout every day thinking, well, how are we going to win this game today? And I want the players to understand that, too. I want that attitude with them. And that's just about teaching. It's, it's in general, no, every team does that. Uh, sure, we're going to be young, and, but I went through this thing with the Twins. We, about every three years, we made moves. We lose some guys, and you just it's about winning baseball games, teaching them to be a winner. And uh, sure, development's part of it, but every organization has to develop. But uh, we want winning baseball players, and we're going to try to teach them some of the ways to get there. How is this change different than your last few years? You know what? Uh, I guess I'll find out. I really, I mean, you all, every year was a challenge. Winning, losing, every year you ever manage is a challenge trying to figure out how you're going to get there at the end. Uh, some years it worked out, some years halfway through we knew we were really having some issues but you try to just push your way through it and at the end of the season you want to say man we played really well the last month of the season we figured it out so we're going to be better next year and that was the teaching part of it you know, teaching them how it, what it's going to take on a day-to-day -day basis how much you're going to have to give of yourself to really make yourself a player and be able to help this baseball team and that's kind of the things that we're going to be doing here today. what was your association with chris Bazio prior to taking this job and how does he fit in your scheme, considering he had a lot of veteran pitchers to work with in Chicago? He's a teacher. He's a great baseball teacher. and he's had, He has a lot of respect from pitchers. Pitchers really love him. He's done a lot of good things with some very big pitchers. I have no problem with him. Uh, I, I was excited. Uh, I've known him from a distance. Uh, you know, and I have never been on the same ball field together with the team. But, uh, you know, just looking at his body of work, uh, the places he's been, and, how much respect he's always had for pitcher. He's a great teacher. And, uh, he's going to be very well. He's 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 really into it. He's already contacted, I think, every pitcher on the roster and talked to him. And he's just he's very detailed. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun together. Well, there's a lot, probably a lot to be determined between now and spring training. But just looking at the roster now, and especially the pitching staff, it'd be fair to say there'd be more. To sort out in terms of like at least the starting rotation than in a, than in a normal spring training? Well, I'm going to have to get to know them all in the first place. I haven't really seen many of them. And uh, getting to know personalities and the whole package and then uh, kind of see where it all fits and uh, be a lot of discussions between myself and, and uh, you know, Al and his staff uh, about what their thoughts are and then we'll kind of work our way through that. But this is really spring training is going to be an opportunity for me to see these guys on the field, uh, see their work habits during, during our, our spring training workouts and all these things and kind of get them, you know, kind of get in the flow with them and get to know them. I mean, that's the most important thing for me right now. And then we'll eventually we'll be setting up for a baseball team at the end of spring training and kind of get our pitching staff together and kind of go from there with a lot of conversation with my staff, my on the field staff, and then the staff up there. So it's a process. And the, the biggest thing for me is to get to know these guys uh, personally, and then we'll work from there. When do you have a core of young pitchers already with Fulmer, Norris, Boyd? You've got another crop of young pitchers on the way. Maybe it'll take a couple of years. How do you deal with a rotation? It's probably going to be pretty young for quite a while. Do you have to handle them? differently, how differently compared to, you had a, a veteran rotation for, for quite a few years. Ago, well, so I didn't when I first got there, so yeah. uh, <clears throat> it's uh, the people I like bringing over Rick Anderson, my pitching coach that was with me for all these years, going to be in the bullpen. You know, you, you have good pitching people that are going to be able to put their hands on these guys and, and kind of show them the way. Uh, we'll get a good feel for this pitching staff and we'll work our way through it. And, uh, uh, you know, I'll rely on my pitching coaches. Uh, I feel like I have two of them with Boz and Andy. They're both really good and really good with pitching. So I think they're going to be in good hands in spring training. And uh, we'll have a lot of conversations about it and work it all out and try to get try to get these guys in the right places, whether it be bullpen or starters, and make, make sure that we get them in the right places so they can have the most success. So uh, it'll be fun seeing all these guys. I'm excited about it, but first I have to meet them, shake their hand, and then watch them go do their thing.
How do, how do you see the logistics of, of Joe Varva and you working, you know, him being kind of the liaison between the analytics department and the dugout? How, how do you see that working? Quality control. Quality control. Quality control. <laughs> uh, Joe's a great baseball guy. You know, he was a field coordinator in the minor leagues. He's run them. I mean, so this guy's. I hate talking about that he was with the Dodgers because he's, he's always got that Dodger blue in him that I try to get out of him, but I never can. Uh, he's a great baseball guy. He, uh, his knowledge, you know, being with the Twins the last couple of years as the bench coach running through the analytics part of it has been fantastic. Uh, you know, he's well versed in it, and uh, we're all still learning. You know, all the old school baseball is we're still learning this part of the game, and it's kind of, it's fun. It's something new, and we always like new stuff. So that's. Uh, uh, He's versed in it. I had a little bit of taste of it out in Arizona, so uh, we're talking with our people up here, and we're trying to get a good department going here, and they're working really hard, so it'll all be fun. We'll all get it together. But Joe's, you're going to enjoy him. I call him Humvee because he walks around humming all the time, so he has a good time in the game. All these guys do, but they're very good teachers, and that's what we've kind of put together, good teachers. Can you see the evolution of the defensive shifts over the kind of seeing it rise and then get tempered a little bit. What are your philosophies on some of it? How much does it depend on personnel or pitchers? And do you have any idea yet how you might utilize it? I haven't really got into that. I know that when Paul Molitor came on my staff uh, my last couple of years, Molly and I talked a lot about it because a lot of teams were doing the shifts and all these things. And I said, you know what, let's start looking and seeing what other teams. So we both started watching a lot of video and seeing what other teams did, how they played people. And we started using it that way. That was probably our, our best means at the time, was to just watch videos of other teams, how they're playing guys. And we started talking about it. We started doing it. So it was kind of entertaining. It's something else to keep you entertained during a game. Uh, hey, let's put this guy over here and see if somebody hit it to it. So, you know, we started doing it. And now, believe me, there's so much information out there that tells you where they're going to hit these balls. We have charts. We'll have all those things, uh, line charts and all those things, and we'll use those. And it's uh, another way that baseball's, you know, helping. I mean, honestly, this analytics really helps you. It puts guys, and now we've got guys that try to hit home runs because they hit a ground ball. We've got 16 guys standing there to catch it. So that's kind of where we're at. The game's going to keep adjusting, and uh, you know we'll be a part of that. Hi, Scott. How are you? I'm okay. Nice hair. How much input do you think you'll have in the, with the Rule Five pick and the one and the Twins? How much input? Yeah, they're asking you for your thoughts on the Twins guys that you would have known. I'm just trying to find this roster. <laughs> all right, let's not start trading adding people to it. You know what? Uh, <clears throat> we're in a good position, and uh, you know what? There's been a lot of talk about it. And, uh, I'm sure when we get in that, when they get into that Rule Five. They're going to get the right guy. There's been a lot of discussions, and another thing that's really fun for this organization, we're going to get an opportunity here and uh, see what they do. I'm not going to uh, go any farther talking about that, but uh, it's, a, it's a good position to be in. We're going to get a pretty good player out of this situation. There's a lot of good ones out there. From a managerial standpoint, is it easier to carry a pitcher or a position player as a Rule 5 guy, given the inexperience factor and being able to pick and choose your spots? Which one is easier, which one is tougher? Well, we carried Johan Santana. That was really easy. Uh, <laughs> I, so that's one guy that I could really say easy. But you can go either way. Uh, you know, you can. it's easier probably to figure out ways to use a pitcher than it probably a player, but it just depends on the guy you have. And, what he brings to the table, uh, but pitching really goes a long way in this game. Like I said, I'll just say Johan Santana. That was the easiest ever. When you you had got Santana, did you know immediately that he was something special, or was it a pleasant surprise that he developed? In the well, we used him out of the pen, but as as he went along, the one thing he he never backed away from anything. He knew he was a really tough kid. He was a great athlete. Really filled his position, really moved around, really worked hard, and he was a positive kid. He never had anything negative to say. He knew what was going on. He understood it, and he also was one of these. I'll show you. You know, I'll show you. He developed some pitches out of the pen. It helped him a little bit, being able to kind of, you know, play around with pitches and everything. And he found that change up, and you know what? Uh, he took off from there. But he was really easy. I mean, it was. He was 
you knew he was destined to be a heck of a pitcher. You never know how far a guy's going to go, but once he found that changeup, uh, it was unstoppable. I mean, he just had, he had the pitches, but the mentality that he had made it work. I mean, he was just a tough-minded kid and really game on. When you, when you hired Chris Bosser, did you have a relationship with him before or with uh, Paul Turner? <coughs> Where's he been? We already talked about this. Oh, I'm sorry. Nice, <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> yeah. I was talking to Jackie. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, uh, Boss called me. Actually, he called me at one point when we were talking, and when he was talking about Detroit, he gave me a call and said, I really want to really want to work here. He said, I would love to work with you. And, I'm really interested in this job. I talked to Alan and said, I, I think Boss wants to be our pitching coach, and that's good enough for me. Uh, so that's kind of how it went down. He gave me a call, we talked about it, and he was all fired up. So I was really excited. A guy of his caliber wanted to come to Detroit with me and do this thing. He's game on for this. He's very excited. Plus, his wife's from Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gardy, how, what reports have you got on uh, Miguel Cabrera's health? Doing great. He's working out down in Miami and with a bunch of guys. And I, I, I've had a lot of conversations with some of the staff here and everybody. And our belief is, you know, uh, injuries and so forth kind of knocked him back a little bit last year. But this guy's one of the best players in the game, so he's going to come back with a vengeance. I believe. I believe he's going to come back and do a lot of damage. And I look forward to that because he killed me. He's one of the reasons I had to get this job. Got me fired in the other one. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been told about Victor Martinez's health situation? And when he gets to spring training, how much do you have to see how he can hit? Maybe more than you would expect a veteran in spring training to figure out. I'll, I'll reach out to him once I leave here. He's one of the guys <laughs> I'll call also and see how he's doing and kind of get an update from him. Rather than hearing from everybody else, I'd rather talk to the guys, talk to Miggy too, uh, and everybody else. I'll call a lot of these guys up and uh, uh, check on them and see. But, you know, you're talking about another guy who is a great hitter. I've watched him. I've watched him kill us too. And, uh, you know, it's about getting him healthy and getting his legs underneath him and, uh, you know, getting him on board with what we're going to try to do here. I know people are saying we're going to really struggle, but when you have guys like this, if they can get them healthy and get them back on the field, we, we can do some things. And you add those with some young kids, some very talented kids that we have, this could be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm not saying we're going to shock the world or anything, but we could. That's why you play the games. And it's about these guys being healthy, and that's what we're going to try to do. The easy narrative on the game is to strike out some home runs. But there's so much in between. You can actually steal a game here, steal five there. How much fundamentally do you think if this is sort of a rebuild, do you have to impress upon these guys that you can win a game on a given night in a whole bunch of different ways? Absolutely. This game, I mean, even the good teams we talk about that hit all these home runs and everything, they're still fundamentally sound. They pitch the ball, they get good pitching, and they catch the ball. They don't make mistakes. They don't walk people. Uh, and that goes along with a bunch of great hitters that can drive the ball. You watch the Dodgers. They did so much more than just hit home runs. They really played the game. Their defense was unbelievable. They ran the bases hard. Uh, you know, there's so many attributes to that baseball team. That I, and I, was, I witnessed it because I was out in Arizona. That was a great baseball team. In the same way with Houston. They didn't just beat you with, with bats and everything. They beat you all kinds of ways. Their defense was unbelievable. Their pitchers threw the ball over the plate. So that's what we're going to impress them on. There's a lot of ways to win baseball games, but it starts with the basics, and that's the fundamentals of respecting the game, playing the game, running balls out, being able to steal a base when they give you, take advantage of everything they give you. So uh, we've done that. I've, I've been a part of that for a long time under Tom Kelly. Uh, and then uh, managing the Twins, guys playing the game and respecting the game, and that's, that's what we're going to try to do here. We're going to get back playing the game, respect the game, and catch the ball and get the outs you're supposed to, and we'll go from there. The longevity you had in Minnesota—it's become a pretty rare thing for a manager. Why do you think that is? Well, it's—it's it's an evolving game. Everything changes, and you know what? Uh, if the team sucks, you fire the manager. It's never changed. I mean, and when you know when we started playing bad in Minnesota, they made a change. Uh, we had a lot of good years, but <clears throat> obviously, they needed a new voice, and I felt that too. Uh, and that's just the way it is. Uh, 
So it doesn't happen. I was really fortunate to be in a, a, a city like you know the twin, or the city like the organization of Minnesota Twins because they believe in that longevity. They believe in a family, and, and uh, I was really lucky. It doesn't happen very often. And uh, you know what? Uh, when it came time for them to make a change, I got it. I understood. I, they gave me 13 good years as a manager. I had a blast. I loved it. Uh, and I don't think I don't know if you'll see that ever again. I don't know. Uh, Mike Sosha's out there. He's longer than that, but. It doesn't happen all the time, but that's that's the way the game is. I don't have answers for it. I don't really know, you know, other than the manager. When things start going south, you're going to go to the top guy, and uh, that happens. How different is the job now versus you know you go back to when you first did it? The game's changed a lot. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, the analytics and everything, and you you watch the World Series and you watch how. That game, those games were played by, you know, your best reliever coming in in the fifth inning and going two or three innings, and the games changed. But that's that's kind of where we're at. That's just the way the game. You have to kind of get on board or, or get out. And uh, you know what? I watched it in Arizona. It was it was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed watching Tory run a ball game and and uh, the way we use these people. And uh, you know what? The, the organization, uh, the conversations I had with uh, Hazen and his group. I've never seen, you know, the general manager in the office as much as Hazen was. But he's a baseball junkie, and it was really fun baseball talks. And he tried to get me in there all the time, but I just said, no, 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 no. So it was, uh, you know what, the game's evolved. It's changed a lot, but it's still baseball. You know, you still got to throw the bats and the balls out there, and that's what we're going to do. But we're going to get on board with everything else and, and try to move ahead. Well, hey, Gardy, one thing, one thing that hasn't changed is, the Yankees and their money and the way they build the power teams. How do you keep the ball in the ballpark against uh, those guys now with Stanton on the team? Have you seen my record against the Yankees? Yeah. <laughs> I apologize for you asking you You think I've got that figured out yet? <laughs> We're going to try to figure it out this year, okay? I appreciate you bringing that up, Scott. That's great. That's great. I'm going to get my Jeep and drive back home now. <laughs> you are... Uh, I'm assuming you might remember what your message was back in 2002, the first time you, you actually had that moment. For as much as the game has changed, can I assume the message 15 years plus later is going to be the same? Absolutely. Yeah, I, and you know what? My message was I learned a, from Tom Kelly how to get out and pay attention to the details and don't let anything go. Uh, he was one of the best baseball guys I've ever been around. And I learned so much from him. So when I took over, he kind of mentored me into that, talking my way through as I was getting ready to take over the job. But I loved what we did. I loved how we we got out and we did our work every day in spring training. These guys got their work in and we didn't, we, it wasn't about the amount of time we spent out there. It was the quality time that we spent out on the field, and that was important because players don't like to stand around and get bored. So we kept everything moving, and I just kind of followed that. I just kept it in place, and uh, it was a good time. I think the players really enjoyed our spring training. Plus, they got a lot of work, and when we started the season, most of the time we were ready. We were really ready to go, and, and that will happen here too. We're going to set a good program in spring training. We're going to have our Good Morning America drills where our defense will be ready by 10 o'clock in the morning. They will have thrown enough baseballs to last all day. And we're going to do it, and we're going to teach them that it's about getting ready to play the game, and respect the game, and, and catch the ball. We're going to do that. And, and uh, I think they're going to enjoy the heck out of it. Good morning, Mr. You're the lead guy. I Pick up the number of prospects you have. In the system, how do you usually like to handle the num number of young guys in the spring training? Do you like having prospects up to kind of get a taste of being around the big league clubhouse beforehand? Could you invite some guys who might not necessarily have a chance to make a team, but who might benefit from that type of experience? Well, you know what? They're going to set the spring training roster. They're, they're pretty much got that the invitees and all these things. And, I'm not good enough to tell you all these different guys. So they're going to have them, but I love seeing the kids come over. And throughout the course of spring training, when as you start sending players down and your roster gets smaller and smaller, we bring players over to help us through ball games, and that's kind of one of the funnest times for me to see these young kids come over from the lower minor leagues and get them in a game and get them in a bat 
and uh, those are always exciting times for me because I get a feel for the kid, and I get to watch them get out on the baseball field and see how they handle themselves. So, and I'll get to know more people. That way. So as spring training goes along, we always do that, and it's always a really cool time for them and for us. Plus, they get like 25 bucks for coming over. So. <laughs> hey, Gary, I know you. I'm sure you've talked about this in Detroit at your introductory press conference, but there's a guy that. You knew Sparky Anderson, you knew Ernie Harwell, you see Al Kaline, you see Willie Ward. You know baseball in Detroit. What does it mean to take over this franchise as manager? Well, you know what, I had a lot of great conversations with Jim Leland. And, you know, if he told me once, he told me a thousand times behind the cage during their batting practice when I'd go out and talk to him. One day he said, if you ever get an opportunity, he said, you would love to manage in this ballpark and manage these, these fans and this ball club. He said, it's just wonderful. And you know what, so uh, I'm going to get the witnesses firsthand, and I'm really excited about it. I, I know the history. I know this. My brother, older brother, back when we were growing up in Oklahoma, he was a he was a Tigers fan. Just He loved Al Kaline, and he loved Mickey Lolich. He was a left-hander, right, of course. And Mickey Lolich, we played wiffle ball in the back backyard, and he was dropping it down on the side and throwing sliders to me. And he was always, you know, a Tigers guy. So, you know what, this is for him, too. Uh, he uh, is not with us anymore, but uh, I know that he'd be really proud. Last season, you said the next to Trey Lavella will be able to actually match the What qualities did you see in Tory that enabled him to be I taught him well, didn't I? <laughs> He's a great communicator, very intelligent baseball guy. I, I really enjoyed watching him walk up, go out almost on a daily basis through the outfield, reaching out to everybody, getting to know families. and uh, That's just, that's not even talking about how great he was in, in, the, in the dugout, um, running a ball game, talking about the game. His knowledge of the game was unbelievable. I mean, you know what, uh, I, I thought that was a lot of fun to watch. And, and uh, you know what, uh, I, I thank that whole organization for giving me an opportunity to get back in the dugout. Uh, they took care of me out there. I went through a few health problems, but uh, you know, from Tory on down, the whole coaching staff out there, I had a blast. And it kind of rejuvenated my my zest. I mean, I, I watched these guys do it, and it was really fun. And Tory was a big part of that. Uh, he's a good friend and a great baseball player. Were you surprised to see what the playoffs? No. We had, a, we had a really good baseball team. And uh, as most managers tell you, our job is not to screw it up. Tory did a really good job of not screwing anything up. But he set an atmosphere that the guys wanted to be there. They loved coming to the ballpark, and that's that's one of the best things a manager can do. That would create an atmosphere that the guys loved coming to the ballpark and playing in, and he did that very well.